Okay, La Tafale, I have to follow up with you on something you said. You thought that you were one of the most unlikely candidates to win Miss Samoa. What do you think of the challenges uh, for Samoans who are born in New Zealand? Sure, I mean, obviously not being home in Samoa is one. Um, but then I guess living in a community where you're surrounded by um, English as the predominant language. Um, and then, um, like, for example, myself, you know, um, I, I don't have, I, bilingualism isn't something that I was, you know, born and raised with, but my identity as a Samoan was definitely, um, definitely cultivated in me from a young age, despite the fact that I couldn't speak uh, Samoan. Um, and I guess one of the reasons why that happened is also education was such a big key. Um, you know, when, when our, I guess, grandmas and grandpas, you know, migrated over to New Zealand, mm. one of the key things that they, that they wanted was education and they wanted the younger generation to do well. And so, um, so for me, a, a big part of my life was excelling and excelling mm. in the school system that I was in. Uh, and, and, and so obviously the command of the English language is something that I love. Um, uh, and then the command of the Samoan language is something that I love, but in a different cultural setting, um, having that expectation of me having to, you know, be able to speak Samoan um, made me quite fearful at that time because, um, of course, you don't want to, you don't want to butcher your own language, you know. Um, and so I think for uh, New Zealand Samoans, especially those who are unable to speak the language, um, it's quite a, it's quite, um, I think it's a tough position to be in because we want to and, um, and, and for me at that time, um, I, I was, that was one thing that I, that I couldn't do. Uh, and so when I say I was an unlikely candidate to win Miss Samoa, it was definitely because the language is, you know, it's, it's precious, it's, it's yeah. a gift. Mm. Um, and so I had to cultivate this new mindset and also um, surround myself with an encouraging bubble of people um, who just saw me as Sa a Samoan because Sam, you know, my Samoan is in my blood. My Samoanness mm -hmm. is in my blood, it's in who I am. Um, and also then, you know, um, coming to my culture and just being open hearted and open minded that, um, you know, I can learn. It's never too late to learn, yeah. especially as an adult. Um, and, and, and it's important to learn and it's important to make mistakes, even with the own language, even if even with um, the Fa'asa Moa. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I saw that whole journey as just an incredible learning journey for me to you know, have this opportunity to find out about who I am as a Samoan. My name, Latafale, is, is so special and I've always been the odd one out as well um, because not many people have, or not many people at all have the name Latafale or have, you know, Samoan names within the community that I was, that I, that I had um, my, my education community or my school, schooling community. Mm -hmm. And, and I loved learning about my name um, because it's, um, it's, it's what they call it. My dad would describe it as a princess title, the Tma'ita'i title of the Matea. And my grandmother came over from Samoa and uh, about a couple of years after I was born, my first name is not Latafale, it's Alofa. Mm. Um, but she gave me her title. Um, and so when I started learning about how wonderful, you know, that, that lineage is and where that stems from, um, and then starting to get involved in my culture a lot more. It's just this amazing part of me that all of a sudden I felt just awoken yeah. <laughs> and, and I just felt so much more connected to who I am and, and who I am when I say I am a Samoan. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was an unlikely candidate, but thankfully I, you know, when I won Miss Samoa, I had to move over. Um, moved back home, and I had to live and breathe in the, in, the, in in Samoa. And I said, one of my goals was, I said, you know, to myself, I said, even though I can't speak fluently, I am going to show my heart and pour my heart out to my community and get involved in absolutely everything that I could. Um, and I think that's what allowed um, people to come out and support my journey mm. and for people to be invested in my journey. Whether or not they were New Zealand Samoans, Australian Samoans, whatever, we're all Samoan. At the end, of it, you know, yeah. we're all Samoan. And, Amen. And yeah, <laughs> they just love. I think we just get a, we get behind. Uh, we get behind, you know, um, we get behind our people. Mm. So I really found that, especially moving to Samoa. That's such a beautiful story, and I think it's one that a lot of children of the migration can relate to. Yeah. Because when our grandparents came here, it was for a better life. It yeah. was for education. It was for, you know, everything that, you know, you've poured your heart and soul into to achieve. 
And I feel that those of us who have been through that journey, seen those sacrifices, and we focused on the things that our grandparents wanted us to focus on. Mm. Um, but now we feel um, very deeply that loss yeah. of the language that came at a price yeah. you know, for us. So, I mean, hats off to you for moving to Samoa, for putting yourself out there, for making the mistakes. And um, you know, I think that is something that's really encouraging for a lot of people of our generation. Yeah. 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 Awesome.